book, by the book, we're in the subject of submit. Amen? Submit, submit, submit. And, and, and when we first started off in submit, we was talking out of James, the fourth chapter, verse 7, and saying, uh, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, right? Submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will he will flee, right? So that was submit to God, right? And then we had to submit to his word as well, right? Yes. Hallelujah. And we had to submit to his spirit, because God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? They're all one, right? We had to submit to the whole, amen? amen? And when we submit to him, then we can submit to his prophet, or his messenger, or his mouthpiece, amen? amen. Hallelujah. And once we submit to his mouthpiece, then we become obedient, right? Oh, yeah. You can't submit to something if you're not obedient. Come on. Amen. And then you also have to trust what you're submitting to. Amen. Hallelujah. And whoever you submit to has to be a willing vessel. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because not only are you submitting to the prophet, but the prophet must submit to God. Right. Right. Amen. So he must be a willing vessel. God don't want you to surrender. God wants you to submit. Amen. Amen. He can make anybody surrender. Amen. If I want to surrender, let it be on my will and not on his. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because God can force you to do what he wants to do. Because he is God. Yes. But I thank God he got a he, he got character. Hallelujah. He got standards. You don't want nobody who want to make you. Hallelujah. He can he could have created us without a will. But thank God we got a will. And he gave it to be free. So you got a right, you got a freedom to choose him. Or not. And so the third part of our lesson from God submitting to the second part was his prophet, and the third part would be to our fellow servants. We must submit one to another. Praise somebody should shout right there. Amen. Hallelujah. So not only we submit to God, not only we submit to his messenger, but we also must submit one to another. Let's go to Ephesians. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right, first, let's go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 17. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Quick, isn't it? Hallelujah. Let us stand and uh, read this word. Praise God. We stand to give reverence to the word. And let's say in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 17, Obey them that have rule over you, and what? Yeah. And submit yourselves. Don't make them force you, but submit yourself, for they watch for your soul, as they that must give account, that they may well do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. You may be seated, praise God. Hallelujah. So we must obey them to have rule over us. So when we're a fellow servant, how do not only do we submit to God, to his prophet, but also, also to one another? So that falls on the level of leadership. Yeah. When you're in a department, when you're up under someone, you must learn how to submit to that person. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? In other words, you must submit to the covenant that's between the two of you. When you're on your job, you must submit to your supervisor. Come on, y'all want to talk right there. Because some of y'all don't like your supervisor. But guess what? You still got to submit to him. Submit or get no check. Hallelujah. So not only are you submit to the supervisor, you submit to the check you want to receive. And so therefore, when we are submitting to one another, we have to learn how to respect leadership. If God has put someone over the house, and then that person over the house has delegated out some of his authority, we must learn how to submit to that authority. Amen. Submit to he who we have delegated, as if it was him themselves. Hello? Oh. Well, we do, I ain't doing that because Pastor ain't saying, or I'm ain't saying, I ain't got to do nothing. Hold up. They come in the stead. They come in proxy. They come in the place of that leader. So when I'm walking as a supervisor, when I come to you on your job, I'm not coming because of me, I'm coming because who sent me. I got a boss too. Look at some 
somebody say, I got a boss too. I got, a boss. I got to report to God like you got to report to it. And he said, what about them hard head stiff neck folks down there? <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, they ain't me no more, Lord. Y'all supposed to say, they ain't me no more. <laughs> I hope not. I hope you're in the hard head stiff neck. Because you want to stop us from getting into the promised land. Hallelujah. You ever got in a, in a little discussion with one of your siblings before? Because they got y'all in trouble and stopped y'all from getting ice cream? <laughs> or some kind of reward? Mom's going to take y'all to the fair? But one of y'all act up? And then everybody get punished? Mm -hmm. Tell your name don't act up. <laughs> no, <I> do. <laughs> you stopped us from getting to the promised land. Mom was on it. She was in a good mood. Until she came in and saw the house was between. And all of a sudden, everybody got shut out because one person didn't do their side. So we have to learn to submit to one another and we can reap the benefit of everything together. See, everybody in this day in society trying to get ahead of each other. Hallelujah. They're trying to one up the next person. In other words, if you help the other person nothing, both of y'all can be on the same level. Now y'all got more to discuss together. Instead of talking down on one, you can talk together to one. Amen. If the person is below you and you ain't helping them up, you're always going to look at them condescending. You're always going to be looking down to them. Amen. But if we learn how to submit, tell somebody to submit. Amen. Submit one to, another. one to another. Let's go to Ephesians. Because we talked about that in leadership. But also, you got to learn how to submit not only in leadership, but look in uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Praise God. I love God's word. Everybody agree with me? Oh, yeah. I agree. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 21. Hallelujah. When you get this, amen. amen. The Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another in what? Yeah. In the fear of God, not in the fear of the person, but fear of, uh, of disobeying God. Hallelujah. When I come and, and my overseer comes forth and he asks me to do something and I might don't want to do it, but I'm not fearing him. I'm fearing disrespecting God. Amen. My fear is in God, right. not in man. Mm -hmm. Man can only do but so much to me. Oh, but God who is able, hallelujah, not only just kill the body, but the spirit too. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm doing it in fear of God. Amen. If you always have that motive that whatever you're doing is as unto the Lord, oh. things change how you see stuff. Oh you won't look at somebody being over you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You just see them as God just using them. Yes. <laughs> and God can use people while you're being persecuted. Oh, yeah. Can I get a shout out? Oh, yeah. Amen. You mean to tell me God can use persecution yes. to promote you? Yes. Yes. When we look in the book of Acts in Sunday school, Paul was being used mm -hmm. to persecute the church, mm -hmm. but at the same time, God was using him to promote Christianity. Yes. He thought he was working something for the bad, but God was using it for the good. Yes. God can turn your head, hallelujah, in order for him to promote you. Y'all yes. get mad at the head. Y'all get mad at people coming up against y'all. Y'all get mad at people persecuting you. But don't realize God is using them to bring better out of you. Don't y'all know the, the children of Israel was chased by the foul? They were being persecuted by the foul. But the only thing he was doing was pushing them into the promised land. If you change your mindset on how you see things, how you won't look at uh, trials and tribulations as hurtful stuff, but as stuff that's going to help you. Thank you. Tell somebody to change your mindset. Change your mindset. And submit. And submit. And submit. He's a submit yourself one to another in the fear of God. See, a lot of people like going to go into verse 22 without going to verse 21. All right. Okay. Oh, I'm about to get in trouble now. Any married folks up in here? Uh, Watch this. He said, wise. Wise. Submit yourselves unto your own up. As unto the Lord. 
And see, what men like to do is wrong with that scripture. Submit, woman. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said, submit unto me as if I was your Lord. But then verse 21 says, submit yourself to one another. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk about that part. Because sometimes people may want to use that dominance thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. To bring you into servitude. Uh-huh. But you got to submit one to another. Amen. Come on, we got to walk in agreement. Amen. Wow. Amen. We can't come into unison if we're not in agreement. Right. Right. Well, I'm the head of the house. Amen. And what I say go. Amen. Not with that attitude. Amen. Amen. I tell you one thing, you might get it right in the kitchen, but in the bedroom, you cut off. <laughs> I don't want to talk up in here. Oh, children on the other side. <laughs> Hallelujah. We didn't grow up service today. Hallelujah. I, 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 now, don't use that. Oh, come on. Y'all know some women, y'all been using that for a long time. Exactly. Hallelujah. Close off the barn door. You won't do what I say. You might be the boss. Hallelujah, but I got control. Oh Baby, you hurt yourself. Oh I tell you, you, you cut me off, but you hurt yourself too. Don't <laughs> right. act like this is just a one way enjoyment. Uh-huh. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about me. It's wrong with folks up in here. <laughs> See, when you take off the blindness, how do people can't manipulate you? That's right. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Hey, come back. Hey, shit, the shit. <laughs> so why submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord how are you going to submit to the man of God but you can't submit to your own husband we got a lot of churches with a lot of women hallelujah they are submitted to their pastor but they are not submitted to their spouse the pastor asks them to do something they jump and run wide open to get it done husband asks them you better go get it yourself you cook just like I can cook. Hold on, wait a minute. What happened to that same attitude uh-huh. when you were submitted to your pastor? Yeah. Why can't you have that same attitude when you submitted to your husband? Yeah. Or to your supervisor? Right. And I had some bad supervisors in my time. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. And I had some good ones too. But the one that was rough for me, I thank God for. Because uh-huh. they helped me. Uh-huh. It was hard. But it helped me. And I learned to take the attitude I'm submitting to God. Because he said, you got to pay those that have rule over you. I can't change your attitude. But I ain't going to let your attitude change me. Can I get a shout right there? When, that, when you allow someone else's attitude to change you, they got power over you. And I ain't giving you no power. Why? Submit, unto your, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Watch verse 23. For the husband is the... Uh-oh, we in trouble now. Oh, no Hallelujah. For the husband is the... Hey. We're not going to repeat that again. For the husband is the... Hey. Come on, let's get that down in our spirit. For the husband is the... Hey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So now, husband sit back with her chest stick out. But along with that coming that head, come headship. That means you got to be accountable. That means you got to man up. Oh, come on. Now these men and women wear pants. So you got to do more than just wear the pants in the house. You got to man up. When it's time to pay the bills, man up. When it's time to do something you don't want to do, man up. While y'all submit it, bring in some water.
shouldn't be my wife and my children. Okay. I got on brand new shoes. Right. Hallelujah. My children's shoes all tore up. Yes, sir. Uh -uh. They might not have no Air Jordan with 565. You know? <laughs> At least they have on some skips. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, if we pick name brands off stuff, them kids be happy with new shoes. Yes, but as head, hallelujah, as the husband, as head of the house, as you are submitted unto Christ, do the same as Christ does. Christ always look out for the church. Amen. So a husband should always look out for his wife. Amen. And then it goes on, as Christ is the head of the church, he is the savior of the body. Amen. Hallelujah. If a marriage break up, it's not because of the wife. All right. It's because of the head. If you stay in connection with God, hallelujah, God will reveal some stuff. If your wife did cheat on you, praise God, you need to look at yourself. What was I neglecting? What was I doing wrong that made her go out? Oh, we don't want to talk like that. We don't want to hear that. See, that's too real right there. You know that helpful? <laughs> Come on, y'all know y'all call some women some cows before. <laughs> oh, oh y'all got quiet over here. Y'all say worse than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, all kind of managed stuff, man. Hallelujah. And then you expect for everything to be good. But if you are the head, hallelujah, you need to cover the weakness. Now they school, and I put on my little cologne. I be smelling good when she walk in the house. All right. I don't know who she been sniffing around the other day. Who was sniffing around her? Oh, come on. Y'all know y'all smell, folks. There you go. There you go. Someone got on some nice cologne. Y'all smell them. Yeah. And then he looking like me. <laughs> <laughs> that should be eating out of my evening. <laughs> Let's get that email a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And so when she come home now, I'm all cologne up. All right. I don't come in there with her. She, she, I kind of want to look nice for her, smell right. good for her. Right. I don't want the food to overpower me. All right, honey. Come on. All right. So I meet at the door smelling good. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I don't know who been walking around and putting on cologne and, and smelling good around her. So what we have to do is learn to reflect on ourselves. If you do a right, praise God, you ain't got to worry about the next man competing. Right. Uh-oh. I better move off of that. Okay. Stay there a little while, praise God. For the husband is the head, right? And he's the savior of the body. Guess what? The church is subject unto Christ so that the wives be to their own husband in everything. Hallelujah. Quit coming in and nagging, folks. I'd rather be on the rooftop oh. than be in the house of a brawling woman. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, yeah, sometimes you got to learn how to appreciate. You get something better out of a man when you appreciate the man. Why do you think the men sneak out and creep? Because some woman is saying, oh, baby, you look good. Boy, your wife show treating you right. They just put wife right in that sense. And you are that spot. <laughs> all over. Come on. Boy, I love your bald head. Yeah. Instead of saying, yeah, my wife loves it too. Uh, I yeah. love the way she run her hair through yeah. my skin. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And, and, and so therefore, you got to learn how to build him up as well. Yeah. I mean, even though he can't cook, the baby show spelling. I ain't say good or bad. It still smells. Thank you for the food. That was one thing my grandson used to always say. It used to bother me one time. I was like, I'm supposed to feed you. And he would come in there, thank you for the food. Thank you, Grandpa, for the food. That's all he used to say. Thank you for the food. No matter what I gave him, it was always, thank you for the food. I was like, I wouldn't remember what he had Because he was always so thankful for the food. 
This is my oldest friend. Praise God. He's a single one. Hallelujah. But he will always say thank you for the food. But he was showing me he was appreciative of what I was doing. And because he was always thanking me for it, I always wanted to feed him. Oh, y'all missed that. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you're building up, hallelujah, who's ruling over you, hallelujah, you'll get more out of there. I ain't saying that to manipulate them. I'm saying that if you're willing to do them, ask them to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. I'm almost there. He said, therefore, as the church is suffered unto Christ, so let the wife be their own husband in everything. Yeah. Don't esteem your pastor above your husband. Yeah. I got to stay there a little while. Hallelujah. 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 Because it made me feel bad. Now he's looking at me cockeyed. I'm about to punch him in his eye. Yeah. I'm about to scream out. How did he keep on looking at me like that? Yeah. Don't be looking at me like that because of how your wife treats you. Uh -huh. It ain't my fault. I'm trying to teach her, hey, you should esteem your head in your eye. Don't come in and act like I'm, I'm, I'm all this and then you treat your husband a certain other kind of way. Because now he got resentment toward the church. He got resentment toward the bar. We got some folks messing up people like that. Oh, that needs to be heard. Watch this, verse 25. Husband, love your wife. Submit to that love. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to that. Submit to that love. Submit. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. When that's the husband, oh, Lord, they'll do anything for you. He submit, hallelujah. There's one woman came up and she was like, I just got to say this. I love the way you look at your husband. I mean, your wife. It just makes me feel good about things when I see a man look at his wife like that. And so you never know who's watching you, who's observing you. So husband, you got to learn how to submit to that love. If you submit to that love, how do it? That love will bless you. It will always be on Father's Day and, and, and Valentine's and, and, and birthdays, hallelujah, that you get certain treatments, hallelujah. Every day will be like, hold on. That's what I was going to say. Every day will be like Sunday. Every day will be like Father's Day. Every day will be like a Valentine. Every day will be, be like your birthday. When you're loving them right. Nobody's stepping out on love. They're stepping out on life. Right. Y'all better tweet that. Y'all better shout all over that. Hallelujah. They, they're not sneaking out. They're not cheating on the love. They're cheating on the life. If the love don't have no life in it. Because the love don't think on itself. It's not puffed up. Hallelujah. Don't think for its own. So husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it. Go to Colossians, third chapter, verse 18. I don't know if I gave you that one or not, but it's there. You move real fast. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 13, 3 and 18. And it says, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. In other words, he put that word fit in there this time. It's because your husband shouldn't make you do stuff outside of God's will. That, that's when you can draw the line in the situation. On your job, if someone will make you go against God's word, then you don't have to do it. Hello? It's just like there's the practice of religion. They can't make people take off their, their hat or their, I can't think of the name of the term. They can't make them take it off. Just because they don't like it. Hello. And so if there's something God is putting in the word and your spouse is trying to make you do opposite, that's when you can say, oh no, I'm not going against my God because I'm submitted to him first. God did you. We don't want to talk like that because we worry about divorce. In that case, divorce is already there. He said, husband, love your wife and be not bitter against them. Children, do what? Obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. So there's an order to submit. First submit unto God. And then Christ is the head.
head, submit to Christ. Then the man, hallelujah, have a, a level of submitting to him. Hallelujah, then the children have a level of submitting to their parents. If you follow that proper order, you will have a long and prosperous life. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. If you're not submitting, you're not pleasing the Lord. In other words, what happens, you start provoking folks. Children start getting angry at you. Hello. And kids can pick up on hypocrisy. They can tell you, like, how you want to say you submitted to God and then you act different at the house? Don't tell your kids. See, your kids is one of your first ministry women. They're watching mom. They're looking at dad too. But they're watching mom. Because mom shaped and influenced their life a lot. And so therefore, if you talk about the husband behind his back to the children, them kids are going to eventually do the same with their spouse. They're going to do the same thing in their school. They're going to do the same thing because they see how you treat authority. I know what's going on now. We're in this era where uh, women, feminism is destroying kingdomship. Because we're trying to equate everybody to the same level. And taking out the order of God. Now, I ain't saying you got to be you no know, uh, submissive. I ain't telling you you got to be a slave to a man. Hallelujah. But God got a certain order about things. There's some things we're walking in we ain't called to walk in. But that women, uh, women uh, movement, hallelujah, will make you begin to question your husband. Mm -hmm. Well, he ain't nothing but your husband. You know, y'all equal on that level. Baby, we might be 49, 49, but guess what the other 2% is up to me. I guess I don't know who some of y'all would have now. 98. There's 2% of it. If we 49, 49, there's no 50 50 in a relationship. I don't care what the relationship There's no 50 50. There's always going to be someone. When it comes down when y'all can't agree, someone got to step up. If you're in a business and partnership and both y'all are 50 50, somebody got to be there. But the enemy of fool you say, yeah, y'all equal and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, now y'all broke up. And you're part of this group, and now you become something different. Your life doesn't change. They don't mess up your happy home. But I thank God for women of God. You know what I like about the church? There's some Lydia's in the church. Anybody know who Lydia is? Lydia was one who was submitted to Paul. And she financed Paul's ministry. I see some Lydia's out here. I see some that are submitted to God's way. And when you submit it to God's way, you will do what God wants you to do. Amen. But we want to have some kind of authority, some kind of power over folk. Alright, two more. Let's go to 1 Peter, 2nd chapter. Hallelujah. Because I dealt with leadership, dealt with marriage. We need to deal with singleness as well. 1 Peter, hallelujah. Mary said, thank God. Hallelujah. Thank <laughs> God. She went there with silence in there. <laughs> if you want to bust out, I won't get my voice in here right now. The Bible says, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governor or as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. And, you know, I looked at the scripture and I found something different. I found that. Eat your body. You can't do whatever you want to do with it just because you're single. Amen. You need to be submitted to God. Amen. I'm saying I can do whatever I want. I ain't got nobody to report to. Yes, you do. You got God to report to. You got Christian up under your labor, in your profile, and then you talk about you can do whatever you want to do. Devil is a lot. Male or female. If you ain't married, you should still be submitted to God. Amen. Married to Christ. Amen. And when you marry to Christ, you can't do what you want to do. You'll find yourself less in club and more in the body. Less on that telephone. 
Teach your pastor. Talking about folks. Ooh. And more in your work. So there's a singleness. And Paul even said, he said, I will prefer you to be like me. I will prefer you to be single like I am. Hallelujah. Because a single person can do more than a married folk. So when married folk, they got to think about the other spot. But when you sing, the only thing I do is that whatever God say, I can do it. I ain't going to have to go back to the house and say, honey, you know, the Lord told me to do all this here. Well, you need to have another conversation with God. But when you sing them, and he said, go here, you can go. You ain't got nobody to report to. You ain't got to have this long discussion because they can't see what God said to you. So there's a blessing in being single. Paul was able to go out and evangelize the whole Mediterranean area because he was single. Watch this. Not only is it in singleness, he said unto governors and unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put the silence the ignorance of foolish men. By being single and committed to God, you can put that ignorance that you got to have a man. Uh, See, a lot of church don't want to talk about fornication. Uh-huh. They don't want to talk about sex outside of marriage. Because you got too many single folks in church. Yes, yes. But we're not teaching them to be submitted to God. Right. Jesus was single. Uh-huh. And you ain't heard him sleeping with marriage. Or mother, or the other man. But he walked in his singleness. He was committed to God. He's a unit. Oh, he could, but he chose not to. So he can put the silence. Those who say, I got to have a man. We live in a society where you say you got to have a man or a woman. You got to be sleeping with someone. Uh-huh. You got to have a boo or a babe. Uh-huh. Somebody got to warm your bed. Uh-huh. That's what they Get your comfort. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get you one of them old size teddy bears. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get somebody beside you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got some children? Tell them to sleep in the bed All with right, you. <laughs> oh, you. You got to need something to hold on to. Praise God. But we got that mindset now. And guess what? We're teaching folk. This on social media, we're teaching it so strong. Yes. They get in there and praise God on Sunday about church. And then the next thing you know, they're talking about boo and who they lay up. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a night. Yes. Uh, hearts and kisses and tongue hanging out. Yes. And then it's the saints doing it. And then wonder why we look at them kind of cross-eyed when we see them. You don't want to put it all out there. You broadcast it. So we must be singleness to God. Tell somebody being singleness to God. When you submit to him. Submit unto God. First Peter 5, 5th chapter. Go to 5th chapter.
Go ahead. Be sassy if you want to. Time you got home. Ooh, man. Little Charlie Jr., could you ride to that, that Swiss street? Everybody got it. And pick me out a Swiss. And you better not bring back nothing that's going to bring. Because I'm going to use that one, and then I'm going to make you want to pick another one. Oh. Come on, say, well, twine and twine them there. See, they, they read some scripture where they say, uh, three cord is something that hard and broken. <laughs> Come on, the wind up three and we'll plat that thing. And with the word, talking about you want to talk back to some elder? That's where Mr. and Mrs. was always in place. Yes, sir, and no, sir. Now, huh? Well, yeah, no. I look at him like, parent. Start with you. Because one person told a family free, you ain't got to tell her no yes, ma'am. The other girl told you, you ain't got to say, the woman told you, you ain't got to say yes, ma'am to her. That because she was bitter at her because when she was coming through. And sometimes we pass our bitterness into our children. So no respect gets you a long place. Matters will get you a lot further. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. When somebody says yes, sir, no, sir, and thank you, and, and I appreciate it, that goes a long way. Yes. Yes. But we're trying to teach kids the different now. If they go out there and say something, go jump on the teacher. Yeah. And if the teacher don't like it, jump on the principal, too. They're going to fight the whole school. Yeah. And know your child, baby. Yeah. Oh, come on, baby. They kids ain't got nothing on your kids. <laughs> Don't you be swinging from the chandelier? They jumping up there all over the roof. And then they come to church, you think they're going to sit there and go, Johnny good, Johnny be good all the time. Man, Johnny be jumping all over the house, tearing up stuff at your eye. And now you want to send that demon to school? And then we can't put no restriction on it? God resist the problem. And he gave grace to the home. Last scripture. Go to Genesis uh, 16 and 9. Because I want to make sure we understand this. Amen. Genesis 16 and 9. 16 and 9. Genesis. When you get there, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And the angel of the Lord said unto Hagar, mm -hmm. Return thy mistress, Sarah, and submit thyself unto our hand. Oh, wow. See, this ain't fully revealed until you go to verse 10. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to the mystery and submit thyself unto her hands. Verse 10, 16 and 10. I know, I know. I should have just told you 16 chapter. Praise God. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> you get there. Watch verse 10. And the angel of oh, there we go. And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply. I will do what? Multiply. I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could think or ask. He said that if thou shalt not be numbered for multitude. Hold on, who was Hagar? She was a mistress of Abraham, right? Abraham. That was Abraham concubine, right? The same one says they go sleep with him, go sleep with him, and bear a child in my name. And Ishmael came about, right? And then Sarah later had Isaac, and then she looked at him and got kind of cock eyed with him, and then she stopped punishing Hagar, and Hagar flee. And the Lord said, No, you go back and submit. When you submit, what's going to happen? I'm going to stop multiplying. In case y'all miss that. Hallelujah. When you submit, God can multiply you. When you show over this, God can bless you. He said, I will multiply that seed exceedingly. In other words, your expectation ain't nothing compared to what I'm about to bless you with. It's nothing compared to what I'm about to bless you with. If you will submit yourself, tell somebody, submit. There's prosperity in submitting. It's amazing how we submit to the doctor, but we can't submit to the physician. We can't submit to the healer. Hallelujah, the one who can 
heal your soul yeah. and heal your body. Yeah. Thank you. Pastor Lauren, she went back. Amen. And because she submitted her children for numbers with the stars. Because she was always a part of the promise that was already given to Abraham. That as the grand, as the sand of the sea, show, uh, on the beach or the seashore, as the stars in the sky, can you count them? He said, that's how I want to number your children. It wasn't only in Isaac, but it was also in Israel. But he got, oh, come on, was a gatekeeper to that blessing. And by her submitting, hallelujah, she released another blessing upon her children. If you would submit to God, if you would submit to his prophet, if you would submit to your fellow servant, to one another, there is a seed, hallelujah, that's waiting to be multiplied in your life. Thank you. You know, the Lord changed the message on me today because I wanted to deal with built for growth. He said, you submit, you are built for growth. When you submit, the concrete is submitted to all the structure on top of it. Hallelujah. So it's submit for growth. He said, you will pull me deep. Whatever you pull me at, I can hold. I got to be submitted to the foundation. And when you are built for growth, you got to expect to build your growth. Yeah. What's the purpose of being built for growth and are not built to grow? You should be built to grow every day for what God is about to do in your life. Yeah. Can I get amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I hope this word has demonstrated the power in being submitted. Submitted to God. Submitted to His Father. Submit to one another. Because sometimes we think submit, oh, well, I'm not married, so I ain't got to submit. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not a part of the church, I ain't got to submit. But yes, we all must submit. We submit to the government. We all submit to our tax to the government without complaint. But when your ties come along, oh, I'm a shout right here for myself. Can you give me some shout music? <laughs> Personally, income. 
I know it was like our entire ones that's good. I'm gonna leave it like that. But how can you see God in this principle? If you want to block it, disobey it. 